Hi everyone, it's Ida Walsh, and today we're going to specifically talk about options for stressed or distressed homeowners and how they can use reverse mortgage to see if it is a good solution for them or not. Now, in this webinar, we're just going to talk about different ways that a reverse mortgage can help in different stressful situations. So, so it may be something that you have not thought of, but we believe in some cases, it's not for everybody, but in some cases, it is a lifesaver. And it's an opportunity for you to really discuss with your uh, financial advisor or an accountant. Now, I have with me somebody who is very, very passionate about what he does and um, focuses on reverse mortgages only. So, Bob, thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. It's great to be here. So Doing what have, I love to do. That's right. So we have Bob Adams here, and today we're going to talk about um, basically stressful situations for people who are 62 and up. So, Bob, do you want to just talk about what a reverse mortgage is, just for people that haven't seen your other materials on what it is and how it works? Sure. And and let me start by saying there's a huge number of myths and uh, misconceptions out there. And I'll try to encapsulize it real quickly for you. A reverse mortgage is a way to get the equity out of our homes without having to make a monthly mortgage payment like we do in a traditional refinance or a traditional purchase of a home. So it's, a, it's just another mortgage when it comes to the fact that it's recorded at the courthouse as a lien, just like any other mortgage. Um, there's no change in the ownership of the home. It's just a lien, just another mortgage. And it enables people of my generation and older to get money out without having to make a monthly payment. And it's a tremendously safe program. Over the last two or three years, there have been momentous changes in the way that the program is applied and the rules and regulations and legislation surrounding it. And that has been a huge reason why financial advisors, elder law attorneys, CPAs, and other professionals who deal with 62 and better people um, have really embraced it. And today we're going to talk about, I actually have a, um, a 25 ways that a reverse mortgage can help you. And you can ask for that and we'll get it to you. But we're going to focus on three or four today and um, that specifically relate to stress, uh, which we're all familiar with. And stress is usually, well, nah, that may be putting it, that may be going too far. Stress is often a financial issue. So a reverse mortgage can alleviate financial issues and stresses. And we're going to talk about some of the ways that we can do that. Excellent. So we talked about, obviously, if you're here, you know about our distressed um, specialty website that where we have additional information. Mm -hmm. Stress can come in many different ways. It could be due to death. It could be due to divorce. It could be due to relocation. It could be due to a slew of different things. And today, specifically here, we're going to talk about a few ways that, as Bob had stated, the reverse mortgage can really help. Um, because sometimes we don't we don't realize all the different options that we have, and we think we can only do one or two things. And so we wanted to just let you know that there is a different option for those who are 62 and up. So um, obviously, we talked about the different stresses: divorce, death, medical bills, other financial stresses. And like Bob said, he does have an entire list of 25 different ways that you can use a uh, reverse mortgage. So um, maybe it's somebody in your family that can also benefit from that. So I think, um, Bob, let's talk about the first one that we know. Obviously, when people are in financial stress um, and they need money. So what are some of the options that they can get money? I encounter this a lot in uh, in my everyday work with with people of my generation and older. Um, when you lose a spouse, it's more, uh, first of all, obviously it's an emotional loss and it's tragic and there's grief. Beyond that, there's some practical considerations that soon come home to roost. Uh, it, you know, people realize pretty quickly, for instance, um, generally speaking, a spouse's, the surviving spouse's income 
is going to go down significantly when their spouse passes away. It could be that the Social Security is no longer there. Oftentimes, the pension that that, that that deceased spouse has earned over 40 years of working is cut in half for the widow or widower. So there's financial stress involved with a death of a spouse. And sitting in your home, in, in most cases, and we can qualify it with a five-minute phone call if this is, is, you know, if it's, first of all, if it's possible, and second and more importantly, is it appropriate? But when these stressors come about, and it's mainly lower income after the death of a spouse, we can determine what kind of equity you have in your home and whether or not we can pull some of that out and perhaps create an income stream, stream for you and allow you to live the kind of lifestyle that you were used to living as a couple. So we can, we can mitigate that, that lost income through the use of a HECM home equity conversion mortgage or reverse mortgage. So I think it can help both ways. First, if they have equity in the home, right, mm -hmm. they can um, basically tap into that equity and take some money out to handle some of their financial stress. Yep. And the second thing is if they need to sell their home and need to purchase a new home or someplace to live, um, then HECM or H4P would help in that scenario as well. Correct? That's right. You've introduced a, a, an extremely important concept that comes into play um, after the death of a spouse, perhaps during silver divorce, which we'll dedicate another session to. But um, not only can a HECM or reverse mortgage loan be used as a refinance to create a lump sum of cash, a stream of income, a line of credit, or any combination thereof, that's when we use a HECM for a refi where the surviving spouse stays in the marital home. Okay. What you brought up, Ida, is uh, it's called the H for P, the HECM for purchase. Where, and, and by the way, in that first, it's very important. Sometimes I overlook the fact that you know, when you do a, rever a reverse mortgage, a HECM loan, you don't have a monthly payment, okay? So Yes, not that's what I was going to go into, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, it's such a, I, I mean, it, I work with it every day, but it's, it's worth mentioning and emphasizing that you don't have a monthly payment. You're responsible yeah. for your real estate taxes, your homeowner's insurance, and any HOA or condo fees that you might have. But... So that the one one solution is to refinance through a HECM, get a lump sum of cash, get a stream of income, get a line of credit, which is worth a whole nother webinar. Um, and, and I'll be glad to detail that for people. It's the most amazing thing I've seen in 30 years of working with financial products. The second part that you bring up, Ida, a way to use a reverse mortgage is this HECM for purchase or H for P whereby a surviving spouse or whatever, maybe the stress of living in the big house with two acres and needing to cut that much grass and trim that many bushes and da 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 goes on and on. It's a very common thing that people need to right size. Um, sometimes that's downsizing, but we like to call it right sizing so that you can live a, an easier lifestyle. So you can take money from a sale of a home and purchase another home with just a down payment of roughly, I'm going to call it 50 to 55%. Depends on age. And I can I can actually show you an app on, tele, on your cell phone that you can use to compute this. But basically people put, say, you know, 55 or so percent down. And my company, a HECM lender, Retirement Funding Solutions, comes to the settlement table with the rest of the cash needed to make that purchase. And you can live in that home for the rest of your life without ever having a monthly mortgage payment. So that's another solution that can really, really decelerate the stress factor. Help everyone. Yeah. So obviously, if you're having financial situation or need money, 
Um, every little bit's going to help. And especially if your mortgage is really dragging you down and you can't mm -hmm. afford your mortgage. Um, so, yep. so, so obviously there are some different things, obviously, depending on the death of the spouse. Now you are limited on income and also can't afford a mortgage. That would be a perfect scenario for Bob to be able to evaluate that along with your financial advisor or tax advisor. All right. Yep. So money was the first thing. There's different options for that. The second is, as we're all facing, um, I don't think there's anybody out there that hasn't really faced that, is the medical expenses. Um, yeah. Obviously, you know, it can, it can be a huge burden on people. Um, so, so obviously, Bob, you have some options for that as well if they have uh, medical expenses. Absolutely. And that, you know, again, from my personal experience, that can be just debilitating to not only the person who needs home health care or needs medical attention, but for the family. Um, all of us know how expensive medical stuff is uh, today. And, you know, most of us are just not prepared for it. So, and that's a shame, but there is a solution for the stress of, of needing medical care if there's equity in the home that we can withdraw. And we can use that money to, uh, in a lump sum, to perhaps buy the kind of equipment you need. Somebody might need a hospital bed or some other equipment. They need. They may need to to have a walk-in bath, or they may need a ramp out front of the home. You know, all these things that are health-related that just come up over and over and over again can be mitigated and can be helped by money that's sitting in your house that you can't use and you can't go to Wells Fargo or Bank of America or you know the you know XYZ mortgage company because most of us at that age our income is down and banks want income okay chances are if you're in your 60s and 70s and you're basically retired and especially if you've had the death of a spouse where the in household incomes come down, you're not going to qualify for a traditional mortgage, which also, of course, requires that you make a payment, which is why the banks scrutinize income with a microscope. Um, you know, I, I can show you examples, although I wouldn't, you know, hurt anybody's privacy. But I can tell you that I know people with 800 plus credit scores that are turned down by banks for 50% loan to value loans on their homes. So one of the great things about using a HECM or reverse mortgage to help with medical expenses is that you don't need to qualify to make a full payment. We qualify you to make sure that we don't put you in a bad position where you can't pay your real estate property taxes, your homeowner's insurance, or your HOA and condo fees. So yeah. it's easier to qualify. You can use that money to buy medical equipment. We can create an income stream that will help you to pay for someone to come in on an hourly or daily basis, however, whatever you might need to pay for that care. And again, you're not making a monthly mortgage payment along the way. This whole program was created back in 1989 to help people. And the phrase was, and still remains to be, people want to age in place, okay? Those that don't want to right size and are adamant about staying in the home that they've been in for 40 or 50 years, we can help those people. And that's what the program was created by the government for. Yeah, and another thing that you touched upon, obviously, um, when your income is down or when you're going through a divorce or you lost a spouse, your income is going to be down and, and it's going to be harder to qualify with a regular mortgage. But the qualification for uh, uh, a reverse mortgage is a lot easier. I shouldn't say a lot easier, but it is easier than a regular mortgage, correct? That's absolutely correct. Okay. It has gotten tougher in the last few years. And that's a good thing because like, like other loan situations back in 2006, seven and eight, loans were being made that really weren't appropriate. 
And um, so the government has stepped in to protect elderly Americans to make sure that they're not entering into some kind of a loan arrangement that could be harmful to them. In other words, if, if, if we're helping someone whose income is so low that they are not going to be able to pay the taxes and insurance and homeowners fees, then we're not helping them at all. We're just delaying the inevitable. And in the meantime, you know, putting them through a, an application process. So it's, yep. it's very, very safe nowadays, much more than it used to be. You know, there are just different ways that you could really look at how you can utilize um, an H4P, which is the purchase part of the reverse mortgage. So buying a home on limited income, if you can't qualify, um, or if you have special wants and needs, and also, what, as Bob likes to call it, the right size of a home. If yep. now your spouse has passed away and the home is way too big for you to maintain, and you just don't have the energy, bandwidth, or the desire, to really maintain a huge home, you want to right size. So that could be a great opportunity there as well. And remember, we're talking about stress relief here. And all these things that we've mentioned um, can be big factors in relieving stress. I also wanted to, and by the way, we have done an entire presentation and webinar on the h for p or Heckam for Purchase. So contact Ida or myself, and we'll we'll make sure that you get to look at that. It takes an in-depth look at how you buy a home using a reverse mortgage and never have a payment for the rest of your life. Now, there's one other thing I wanted to mention about the um, when we use a refinance to either get cash or a monthly income or, or um, a line of credit. I mentioned line of credit. This is too complicated to get into in depth in this presentation, but I will say that in 30 plus years of working with financial instruments, I have never encountered anything like this. I still shake my head when I, when I look at what we're able to do with this and that the government allows it, okay? And I'm gonna to try to describe it real briefly, although I'll warn people, it's, it's counterintuitive because it's nothing like you've ever heard about before. Most people, when they think of line of credit, they're thinking of a HELOC, a home equity line of credit, of which there are tens of millions of them out there. You know, your BB&Ts, your SunTrust, your Wells Fargo's, your bank, they give you a line of credit against your house, okay? There's some real dangers to those, and, and you know, I can go into them in detail, but real quickly, they, they can reset on you and your payment goes from $200 to $600. They can be called on you so that it's all due at once if the bank becomes unhappy with the loan to value ratio. And they're capped in terms of how long you can withdraw money. And, you know, there, there are some disadvantages to them, although they're extremely convenient loans. You have to look at, in detail and talk to me about what lies in wait out there if you have a home equity line of credit or HELOC? But the yeah, HECM line of credit. Tax, the new tax codes are going to impact what you can deduct and what you can't either for that. Thank you. Another huge factor. It's, you know, the research shows that, you know, the, the interpretation of the new tax law show is pretty clear that if you're taking money from your home using a home equity line of credit or HELOC, and it cannot be proven that it is for home improvement, the interest that you pay is no longer deductible, okay? So that's another reason why there's a huge advantage to the HECM line of credit. And real quickly, the HECM line of credit is money that's left over from any distributions that we might have given you that we can put aside. I call it a set aside reverse mortgage. Um, it's sort of money on the side. And here's the remarkable thing about it. It's hard to wrap your head around this, but the value of that set aside amount of money, okay, is growing every single year. In other words, the money available if I put $100,000 in a Heckam line of credit 
it's growing at roughly 5% per year. So one year later, in my account, my line of credit is $105,000 that is available to me whenever I want it. There's only one restriction. You, you're restricted in the first 12 months as to what you can take. But I can explain that to you in detail. Anyway, the Heckam line of credit is a growing line of credit that many people use as insurance against uh, home health care needs in the future uh, or to pay for long-term care in the future as opposed to long-term care insurance. So I'll need to sit with you and your advisor to really explain that to you. But it's a growing number of dollars that can never be taken away from you, can never be restricted, and can never be called. And it is absolutely guaranteed to you by the United States government, no matter what the value of your home is. You could have a line of credit worth $300,000 and your house price has plummeted to $200,000 and you're still able to get that $300,000, no matter what. Like I say, it's the most incredible thing I've ever encountered in my financial life, if you will. So I don't want to make it any more complicated than that for the moment. But if you talk about a stress reliever and peace of mind, talk to me about the growing Heckam line of credit. All right, great. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I wanted to make sure that you understood that if you're having financial stress, whether that is because of death or divorce or uh, medical bills, obviously if it's if you're struggling with your mortgage payments um, and you're 62 and above and you have some equity on the home, um, there are some options. A reverse mortgage may be a perfect option. And again, we always, always put the caveat that you should get your financial advisor involved with, along with Bob um, and your tax advisor to make sure it's going to be the best solution for you. Second thing we talked about is um, how it can help during a divorce. And we have an entire new video that we're going to be doing after, actually right after this, which will be available as a, as a link from this video as well, um, just on divorce and how it can help. Because I know a lot of times when you're going through a divorce, you're emotionally, financially, uh, and mentally just distraught. And that can cause a lot of heartache, a lot of financial stress. Um, but there are some options that you could use with um, reverse mortgage. So it doesn't hurt for you to just look at all the options and understand what may or may not work for you. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, both spouses agree on some things. So um, we'll go over that again on the next video. The you third what, thing was medical, right? It, so medical could be for you if you're going through that, or it could be for your parents. So if your parents are going through uh, medical challenges or bills, or now they, they need in-home health care or um, additional medical expenses, you know, that could be a huge um, stress. And well, the house is just too much for them anymore. Yes. You know, yep. That happens a lot. Yeah. Um, and then the last one is the line of credit. So, um, you know, there's going to be pluses and minuses, especially with the new tax codes. Uh, things are always, you know, being defined, et cetera. So if this sounds like something that you may want to at least explore, give Bob a call. He's very passionate about what he does. And he can tell you, well, first, if you, you really do qualify. Second, if it makes sense for you. Um, mm -hmm. like we always say, you know, make sure that it's going to be a good decision for you and for your family and understand everything about it, ask lots of questions. We always advise everybody to ask lots of questions and get your financial and tax uh, advisors involved to make sure that it's going to give you the lifestyle that you were looking for. We're, we're really here to help eliminate some of that stress. And by eliminating that stress, you know, you want to enjoy the one life we all have and, um, you know, have know your options along each step of the way. So I yep. hope that was beneficial. And Bob, thank you so much for doing this video with us and sharing your passion, obviously, and uh, and your time with us today. Great, thanks. So thanks. So watch our other videos and uh, we hope to talk to you soon. Thanks. All right, good. All right, all right. I like the way he lead me into stuff. We covered everything. Yep, yep. yep. The next one is going to be the, um, the divorce. Silver divorce. Silver divorce. Let me just find my, yes. Let me see if I can scroll the uh, screen up there. I think I can do it. Okay.
Well, actually, I don't know if I can do it. Oh, wait, maybe okay, we'll... hold on. I can ask. Uh... Let me try one more thing. I got it. Okay. Oh, you got it? Yep. Okay. Perfect. All right. So let's, we're going to do the same thing. Hi, everyone. It's Ida Walsh. And today we're going to be talking about silver divorce. Um, so there are different ways a reverse mortgage can actually help during a, div a divorce. And you may or may not know much about um, reverse mortgages, what it is and how it works. But I wanted to invite Bob Adams, who is a reverse mortgage specialist with us today, so that he can ex at least explain how it works and how it could be a lifesaver in certain situations. As with every video that we do, please make sure that you check with your financial advisor and your tax accountant, and Bob actually welcomes them um, to make sure that it's going to be a, a lifestyle uh, changing or an opportunity for you to make your life better. So during I divorce, obviously. I work with a lot of financial advisors, and most of them are more familiar with reverse mortgage these days and bigger fans of them because of the recent legislative, legislative and regulatory changes that have made them much safer than they ever were. Uh, they were always safe, but there's a lot of misconceptions out there about them. So we want to make sure that you get good information to make decisions about and how they, and this specifically, how they apply to a divorce in our golden years, if you will. We we call it silver divorce. And, uh, you know, <laughs> divorce is tough enough in your 30s or 40s, but try it in your 60s and 70s. Uh, it can cause some issues that we hope we can show you some possible solutions to. As a matter of fact, I was just reading on here, um, the breakup rate for married Americans age 65 and older tripled between 1990 and 2015, according to a survey from the PUW, PUW Research Center. So we'll have a link on that as well. So that just shows, you know, breakups happen every day. Um, obviously, the, the, everybody knows the rate of divorce. And when you're going through it, it doesn't feel like everyone goes through the same thing. Um, but obviously, there, there's struggles. And there are different ways that you can handle when a home is involved in a divorce, right? So if you own a home jointly, then you need to decide, are you going to sell the property or can one spouse stay in the property? So we're going to discuss that with, with Bob here today as far as how you can leverage reverse mortgage to help in certain situations. Because obviously when you're a little bit older, um, your income is different. And, um, you know, obviously there's going to be some different scenarios. So the first one, Bob, I want to go over with you is if the, um, the owners want to sell their property and they want to split the money, what are some of the options? Well, that's uh, first, let me, let me uh, first say to re to emphasize uh, what you were saying, Ida, about the growing issue of silver divorce. There are now, lawyers, uh, full associations of lawyers who specialize in silver divorce. Um, I have access to, uh, to them and uh, I've talked to many of them. You might, we, there was a Washington Post article just a month or two ago that spelled out this, this silver divorce issue. And um, there's a lot of different ways that uh, with your lawyers, you can, you can, make life a little bit easier for silver divorce folks. <laughs> anyway, um, you asked about the, the one scenario where both spouses, neither spouse wants to stay in the marital home, okay? It's a situation where they're saying, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sell the house, you get this and I get that, okay? Now, each one of those divorcees is faced with the problem of how do I maintain my lifestyle with half of the value or half of the equity of the home that we've been living in for 35 or 40 years? How am I going to do that? I'm not going to be able to put all cash down 
to own a $500,000 home if I only have $250,000 in cash from the divorce settlement. I'm also not going to qualify if they're being realistic, unless they're unusual and they're still earning a lot of money uh, because banks are looking for income in order to lend money today. I don't care if you have an 820 credit score. If you don't have the income to support a loan, you will not get the loan. So they're faced with a problem. Each of them is holding, say, $250,000. They don't want to downgrade and go buy something less than they're going to be comfortable living in. There's enough emotional pain from divorce without having to lower your sights about where you're going to live the rest of your life. It's a very tragic situation for many people. So in comes the Heckam for Purchase plan. Each spouse now have a, has a certain amount of money in their hands, and let's call it $250,000. And let's say they're each 65 years old. Well, my company, Retirement Funding Solutions, through what's known as an H for P or Heckam for Purchase, can come to the settlement table. Let's say it's a $400,000 home that they want to live in. They found something they'd be comfortable with, but my goodness, how am I going to buy it? I've got 250 and I'm getting social security and a little pension. My income's 2,500 bucks a month. You know, I wasn't expecting to have to deal with this. Well, if you find a home for $400,000 and you have $250,000 in hand, you can own that home in your name and never ever have a monthly mortgage payment as long as you live there, okay? That's called the Heckam for Purchase. What happens is my company, Retirement Funding Solutions, comes to the settlement table with the other $150,000. Or in this case, we could probably come with 170 or maybe a little bit more. So you'd keep a little bit of cash in your pocket as well. So each spouse could do that, okay? If the scenario is that, hey, I'm not going to live here. You're not going to live here. We're going to sell this house and split the proceeds. Each one can buy a decent, dignified place to live with just the cash they have. They don't have to pay at all, and they don't have to get a regular mortgage and make payments. And one of the things that I want to talk about, which we covered in the other videos, but we haven't covered it in this one, is the qualification for a reverse mortgage is easier than a regular mortgage. So Thank that would also help. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's why I mentioned that income issue. When you're 65 or 70 years old, most of us have a lower income than we did, especially if as a married couple, you can combine your income, okay? But when you're divorced and buying something on your own, very difficult to qualify. You know, the vast majority of people are gonna have a very difficult transition with that. And it's, it's a shame that more people don't know about the Heckam for Purchase solution. So that's one scenario where the marital home is sold, each has cash, they can each go buy a decent place to live and never have a mortgage payment for the rest of their lives. Right. And then okay. the second one is um, where obviously during a divorce situation, if one of the spouses wants to stay in the home um, for one reason or another, you know, uh, and the other one wants out or wants the money or the equity in the home. Right, Bob? So that could be another scenario where um, reverse mortgage or the, the refi with Heckam would help. That's right. And this is, as you said, Ida, this is a scenario where one of the spouses says, I don't want to leave this place until you take me out feet first. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. In fact, I heard it from my own father, <laughs> but, uh, but I hear it all the time. This is where I've been for 35 years. My neighbors are here. My friends are here. I go to the shopping center here. I don't, want my, I don't want my life disrupted. I want to stay here. So what the lawyer says, you know, you owe the departing spouse a certain amount of money out of the equity in that house. Well, here's the scenario. We can use a Heckam refinance on that marital property and pull out a lump sum of cash 
if there's enough equity and we go through the qualification process, I can tell people in five minutes whether this is doable. It takes a lot longer than that and consultation with other advisors to say whether it's appropriate and suggested. But if there's enough equity in the house, we can do a refi, get a lump sum out, and that becomes part of the settlement to the departing spouse. So in this case, the departing spouse has a lump sum of money in their hands that they can go shopping with. Now, do they have to pay 100% cash? No. In fact, it's not recommended even if you could in most cases, depending on your scenario, your situation. But to flesh this one out, let's say again that uh, there's $250,000 in hand, one spouse for the departing spouse, one spouse is in the marital home, which now has a reverse mortgage on it that requires no monthly payment, okay? The departing spouse takes that $250,000 and goes shopping. And hey, if anybody remembers this, please ask me for the Jack and Jill video. It's a little cartoon video that expresses this particular situation. Well, actually it expresses a couple buying a house, but it's a great, great intro to the Heckam for Purchase program. Just remember to ask Ida or myself for the Jack and Diane video. Two American kids growing up in the heartland. Remember that song? <laughs> Anyway, so the, the parting spouse can go find, say, a $400,000 home, put down a large portion, not all of that two fifty, dollars and the reverse mortgage company, my company, will come to the table with the rest of the money to purchase that house. It'll be in that departing spouse's name. It's just a lien at the courthouse, just another mortgage, but there's no monthly mortgage payments for as long as you live there. So... It's a tremendous way to split marital assets so that each spouse lands on their feet. And I want to bring up one other thing about this silver divorce situation. Please know about these options because otherwise, typically, and, and not a lot of people know about this, more and more elder law attorneys and, and, and financial advisors are aware of this. But bring me in and let me offer, at least mention this option, you know, to your divorce lawyer or your financial planner. Because most people, if they're going to buy another house, whether it's the first scenario where both spouses are out shopping with their half of the cash or where one spouse is staying in the marital home and the other is out shopping with their chunk of cash, okay? Instead of going to your financial advisor and decimating your portfolio because you've run into a bad circumstance where now you're forced to buy a four hundred dollars or $500,000 house and you don't have enough money to do it and you can't qualify for a mortgage because you're 68 years old and your income is three grand a month. So you go to your financial advisor and you say, I need you know, another $300,000 out of my portfolio to buy a home that I'll enjoy living in, okay? I don't have any choice, I got divorced. I wish I hadn't, but that's what it is. So what happens when you go to your financial advisor over the last two or three months when the market has has sold off very significantly. Is that a time when you want to go and sell off some of your portfolio at these low prices? Okay. Or here's another scenario. If you have to go to your portfolio, if you're fortunate enough to have a substantial amount of money saved up with only which only a small portion of Americans have, but if you're one of those people that does and you go to your financial advisor and you say, well, I know it's down 11% right now, but I bought it way back when, so I'm still going to make plenty of money. Well, what does that mean? Can you say capital gains tax? Okay. 
So here's an alternative that makes a lot of sense when we sit down and look at your situation where you don't have to go to your portfolio when it might not be advantageous to do so. I can't think of a worse time to be selling than right now. So let's use home equity and let's use a Heckam for purchase to come to the table with the cash that you need. And you'll never have a monthly mortgage payment. Just pay the taxes, insurance, and homeowners association or condo fees. And there are um, lots of different, like there's one that uh, from Washington Post, um, also from Chicago Tribune, et cetera. There are some specific articles that give great examples and scenarios. For example, Washington Post article has one here where, um, you know, this is a fictional scenario involving a divorcing couple in their 70s. And a husband mm -hmm. wants to move out of the home, but the wife wants to stay. Um, and it's a $600,000 property, but they have a $200,000 mortgage. So, you know, it just goes on to talk about, you know, how can a reverse mortgage help with that? So we're going to put a link on that um, article in uh, this website or this page so you can take a look at it. But there are just different scenarios. And I think the best way to really know if it's going to be a good scenario for you or not is really, first of all, see if you even qualify. Um, call, give Bob a call to see if you qualify first and then explore that option, whether that is just for yourself or for you and the spouse uh, or, you know, something as part of a settlement, you know, attorneys, some attorneys may not even know about this, but that can alleviate a lot of stress and a lot of heartache. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, a lot of attorneys are this familiar was... with this, but I'll tell you, yeah, I mean, how could I possibly be, um, up to snuff, if you will, on all the things that a divorce lawyer needs to know. Okay. If right. you came to yeah. me to handle your divorce, you, you'd be in big trouble. Okay. And so we each have our specialties and our bank of knowledge to apply to make our senior citizens' lives better. So use those resources, find out what's out there. And don't believe myths and misconceptions. Get the facts. And, and that's the most important thing that I can do for anybody, whether it be the, the homeowner or divorcee themselves or the lawyer or financial planner that I can, you know, put more tools in their hands. Yep, absolutely. And you guys know, you know, my videos are all about knowing your options. Um, exploring those different options because unless you educate yourself and what is available out there and what would work great for you in your specific scenario, then you're more well equipped to understand, you know, impacts of those actions or not taking those actions, but at least you know what your options are. And it, even if it's not a perfect option for you, it could be a perfect option for somebody, you know. So I hope this video was beneficial. Check out our other videos. And Bob, thank you again for spending the time and energy today and, and uh, sharing your knowledge on, on uh, reverse mortgages. We're going to put Bob's information on our website, but go ahead and let them know about your contact information, Bob, as well. Yeah, it's uh, you can get Bob Adams by calling my cell phone, which is with me all the time. I got to deal with the, the uh, carrier that it rings 24 hours a day. And, if I'm awake, I'll answer it, okay? It's 703-475-1555. You can also learn more about these things and about me at reversemortgagewithbob.com. Reversemortgagewithbob.com. And my email address is Adams, A-D-A-M-S, at rfslens.com. That's for Retirement Funding Solutions, rfslens.com. Thanks. I hope to hear from some of you. Make it a great day. Great. That's it. That's a wrap. Okay. All right. I'm going to uh, stop this so it renders so I can edit. All right.